Hello, Jemima. Did I pronounce that well? Nahumi. Hello. Um, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're the first yeah. to arrive. Pronounce it well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. While you're here, uh, it's an amazing experience we're, we're about to, you know, uh, have today. <clears throat> And uh, I can't wait for Michael to, you know, just, you know, bring forth such amazing insights into, into what Product Field is all about. And um, we appreciate you for joining us. And uh, in a bit, we would, you know, kick starts because we, we want to ensure that we're able to keep to time and then we have the best experience possible. Okay, great. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Jesu Damlari Adeshegun David. Uh, people call me JD, right? And uh, today we have an amazing, amazing, amazing time to look forward to with Michael, uh, Michael Shiben of uh, Field. And uh, Michael is going to be taking us through what Product Field, you know, is about. And uh, I believe so strongly that many of us who are on this call desire to either build a product or to start a company and to change the world with what we're trying to create. And you see, one of the challenges we've always known has been in bringing so many people together to create something together. So most of the times it's like, you know, the language is different. People, you know, maybe they're used to some other ways of working and all of that. But with product field, you know, there is a framework that allows every stakeholder to make sense of what is to be done with a product and the, the goals to achieve and all of that. So uh, without much ado, I'm just going to, you know, uh, invite uh, Michael uh, to uh, introduce us to product field and then, you know, we'll, we'll go deeper into what it is and what we're trying to achieve with this conversation this evening as the time goes on. But then Michael will just, you know, try to give us an overview of product field. So Michael, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, JD, thank you so much for having me. It's a great opportunity uh, to be here and talk about the product field. And I want to keep it like really short. I hope you can see my screen and give you a short introduction. Of what is product field all about? So a little background on uh, my person. Um, I'm co-author of the product field, the framework I'm introducing today. And um, programming is actually my craft. So when I was 15, I clicked the, the right side on my mouse in the browser and clicked view source and started to program my way into the world, but later became a partner at a design company. And we've been building like the first generation of mobile applications for um, iOS and Android devices when yeah, iOS and iPhone was like very young. And my passion is to facilitate like groups of people and help them collaborate like better together. And nowadays I'm a product lead at field.so. This is a startup and we are building, yeah, smart maps for product teams. Um, so what I want to put like up front is please uh, share your experiences and questions um with what you do with the product field or your thoughts during this talk i'm happy to hear from you on linkedin or via email it's michael at field.so and here's a little like personal note this is like me when i was uh, in the 90s 10 years old i guess and you see my uh, beautiful mother and this is Evan from nigeria who immigrated to germany I guess back in the 70s and uh, we lived there uh, for six years it was kind of a daddy to me and so i've like really a heart for <laughs> and a flavor and, and, and great feelings uh, to be here and uh, be innovated by innovate lab and uh, talk to people from nigeria today so back to the product field the product field is a sense making framework for product innovation and there are like five um, attributes. It's product centered. And whenever I talk about like product today, I will use this diamond shape. It's holistic in a way it's complete. It's very easy to understand because it's based on a simple definition on product innovation. Product innovation defined as the realization and introduction of new redesigned and substantially improved products. 
The product field is visual. So with a pen and a paper, you can start using the product field. And I kindly ask you to, to pick a paper because uh, we will draw the product field together in just a minute. And it's valuable. Um, so we have been invited like three times to South by Southwest conference in America. And it's uh, popular, at least in Germany. So uh, people use it to map all kinds of products and work on innovation with this tool. The product field is there to build better products. And I use the term product like in a very, yeah, very broad meaning, um, something that is made work. And funnily, the Greek people had a great term for it. It's called like ergon, the ancient Greek term. It's like the work or the work. So it could be anything from digital products to physical things, consumer goods, services, apps, websites, books. I've seen like the, the second uh, the television company in Hamburg, he's planning like TV shows and um, yeah, brands with a product field. And the product field helps you to deal with complexity because the nature of creation or doing something new and creating product innovation, it is complex in nowadays times. It helps you to create strategic alignment. So everyone knows in which direction uh, this product is heading. It helps you to find the focus and hone the value proposition of your work and help teams to make the right decisions. The product field is a shared language and visual form, and therefore it facilitates communication. And because it's visual, uh, it reveals insights to the illustration, to the to the position where things appear on this product field. And people use it to create a shared map, spot gaps, to, to find things they are currently not aware of, to connect the dots and find strengths and weaknesses in their strategic ideas. What's good about it? Shared understanding is a necessity for, for and basis for commitment and aligned action. So shared understanding coming out of this shared map, shared language and this visual form helps to create commitment in the team and really align the work people are doing in their expertise, profession and discipline. So this is the product field. You see in the center where the blue diamond appears is um, the product. It's a product centered perspective. And I hope you see uh, my camera image right now. Because yes, then I'm going to, it. yeah, awesome. Because I, then I invite you to, to kind of like draw the product field with me. So I hope you have a paper and a pencil and I will, yeah, show you the visual form of the product field real quick. We've talked about like in, uh, innovation is a realization and introduction of newly or substantially changed products. And we have like these two key activities laid out on this two dimensional space. So this is a axis of realization from top to bottom. And this is the axis of introduction from inside to outside. So we have intangible things here, tangible things down there. We have inside aspects, what happens in your organization on the left side of the paper and outside things like customers and users on the right side. So, and then we draw a distinction by drawing lines. Creation starts with a distinction. A is not B, then things come into creation and we distinct the center and the core and the context. The context of an innovation is open towards like all sides, but we can be precise about the center of the innovation. And what happens in the center and then the core here in the center of the product is the value proposition of a product. So the value proposition in every product is a solution towards problems. Otherwise it would be trash. And a unique product or it, it's, um, it, it has a, 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 yeah, a purpose if it has a certain uniqueness compared to its alternatives. Okay. 
So, and this is what uh, people in common literature call, call the value proposition of a product. Something is a solution towards a problem and it is unique compared to its alternatives. That is what we cover in the core. But nothing is happening in a black box or in a vacuum. So the product stands in the context. And on the outside, we talk about like users that pursue certain motivation, but then encounter a problem. But in order to yeah, get a product be used by users, it needs to be bought by the users. So sometimes users and customers are the same, but talking about business software, for example, uh, your business IT department, buying department makes a decision and you are the user of the software or parents are buying stuff for their kids. And to get something into the hands of customers, the product needs to be distributed. So we're talking about aspects of distribution down here. In order to distribute something, it, the product needs to be produced. We're talking about aspects of production here. Um, production leverages enablers like money, time, team, competences. And enablers are, yeah, controlled or led by drivers who are the people who steer in innovation. And drivers pursue certain goals. These are like 12 terms that people commonly talk about when they talk about innovation. And we can summarize them as aspects about like value, user value here, aspects about the market down here, aspects about the resources, and the idea of one product. This is the product field. If you forget everything now, because it's like many terms, just keep in mind like the two axes, like from top to bottom, it's the axis of realization from left to right, the axis of introduction, because um, the definition of innovation is based on the two core activities of realizing and introducing a substantial change or new product in the center. Okay, so how is the product field used? First, when you use it with a team, you lay out the product field canvas. And by doing so, like just bring the uh, canvas to workshop space or meeting room, you set up and establish a common vocabulary. Then you start to map and locate all knowledge that you and your team do have about the product to create a shared understanding. That's the second step called map. Once you've done it, you analyze the links and tangents between all aspects of your products. And we've created and described like simple check routines that you can use. Afterwards, you identify strengths and weaknesses. You visualize patterns. And then you generate like powerful action items for you team to focus on. To learn more, we've written this book, the Product Feed Reference Guide. The good news is it, it is available online for free. The URL is read.productfeed.com where every step, frame, map, check and find is described. And then we are building the software field.so, which helps teams to bring the product field in use in complex environments to manage portfolios and to yeah, involve uh, tea, uh, colleagues and teams uh, without running workshops, but in a digital and remote manner. Let's think a bit further and then JD and I am going to show you the product field by example. I'm very excited and looking forward to this live session and live demonstration of the um, product field. So thinking further, the product field is in the visual form a mandala. What you see here is a group, group graphics keyboard. This is uh, by a consultancy group from, from America. They, um, yeah, found like different visualization styles from posters, lists to clusters, grids, diagrams, and drawings, and um, described what these visualization types are good for. The product feed is a mandala, and according to this group's graphic keyboard, the mandala helps you and your team to perceive wholeness and see gaps and unities, 
under a diversity of perceptions. So this is how we deal or the product we deals with the inherent complexity of um, product innovation. Then you might've seen the image in the middle. Um, once we are able to put all the many, many true parts together, we can build an actual whole layered complex truth. Look at the right side. We've seen uh, the upper left area, which is very on the inside and more abstract part. Yeah, it's not real life there. It's about the viability, the idea of one's innovation. And it's visualized here through green color. And normally like executives, business development people, product management, like care, especially about this part of innovation, that's their perspective on the product and the center. Look at the lower part. It's about the feasibility of one's idea or product. Normally people like engineers, programmers, editors are working on the feasibility um, of the product. And then on the right, there's marketing, marketability, marketing people, sales, growth hackers, conversion copywriters. And this is the bottom right side of the field, which is like more specific, more on the outside where the thing is realized. And then there's uh, desirability, um, actually, uh, that expresses the value, the attractiveness of a product. And this is normally connected to roles like R&D, support people, or design. And what I want to show here is that this whole form, this mandala, helps you to connect like different truths about this product. And these truths are shaped about, um, through the career path of the people working together on one innovation idea. Um, but this is not one perspective that is the right perspective. It's more the layered complex truths that you establish for your team if you bring all the insights together and place them on this map. And this is what the product field reveals, the whole layered complex truths and not like disconnected perspectives on the product idea. And then there's a third thing, the product field also acts as what I call form of innovation. The product field helps you to, to collect knowledge and connect all sayings, mantras, methodologies, advice you get uh, from books, from courses, from uh, other people talking to you. It helps you to, to gain innovation wisdom. Let's look at this example, and I will continue after our um, example that we're, we're doing in a minute, but um, I'm pretty sure you're familiar, or you might be familiar with the design thinking steps. And these are like five common activities. You empathize, you define, is a challenge, you ideate on that challenge, you prototype your first idea or the most uh, promising idea, and then you test. And it seems like a linear way to tackle innovation, but actually it's kind of like a circular uh, connection, circular process, because it's a back and forth, and it informs like each steps and forms the uh, steps you've done before. Um, but what I mean, like the product field connects different kinds of uh, innovation series or methodologies. You can use the visual form of the product field and place these steps on this visual form. And what you see here is empathy has something to do with the, on the outside, with the users. So what are their motivations? You research their pains and problems. Then you define the challenge that it's in between the inside and the outside, your strategic or your company goals and the user motivations. Once you've done it, you ideate brainstorming session, brain writing session, sketching sessions, and it's a back and forth between the uniqueness and the solutions. Once you've picked your best solution idea, you start to prototype. And prototyping is like speeding up the production to bring something out, to distribute something really fast. And you don't distribute it to the market directly, you distribute it to test with the users uh, that you've researched before. And this is just like one innovation methodology, like the design thinking process. But once you start to like map other methodologies as well, you see like overlaps and connections. And yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that this way helps you to, to kind of like gain innovation wisdom through the visual form. So last slide. 
before we go to the live demo, okay? <laughs> um, so what happens next? We do the live demo, we take some time, it will be fun, a mapping session uh, with JD about a yeah, specific product, we will learn more in a bit. And um, then I'm happy to think a bit further about this innovation wisdom and the form of the product field. And afterwards, I hope uh, you've prepared some questions or you get some questions now by listening. And I'm happy to have a short Q&A session. Are you good to go, JD, for, for, yes, for our next step? Yes, I'm good. I'm good to go. Okay. Amazing stuff so far. Any yes. questions right now? OK. So then I switch over to a software called Myro, or as we pronounce it, Miro. And um, we use the form of the product field to describe an innovation that it's released right now. It's going to better testing tomorrow, right? Yes, yes. OK. Um, yeah, tell us a bit more about like a trifold or trifold. Okay, it's a uh, trifold. And uh, okay, so trifold is uh, a product that is meant to be a digital safe space for intending couples and, and young couples, you know, to actually get access to all the help they need to build amazing marriages and beautiful homes, right? So uh, we discovered that uh, a lot of people wanted. Uh, counsel and insights on how to build very amazing marriages, but all the solutions are kind of fragmented. They're scattered everywhere. So somebody could offer you counseling, somebody else could offer you, uh, you know, uh, talks about finances, how to, you know, uh, build your finances as a couple and all of that. So we just saw that spread around. I would say to, you know, aggregate all of that and allow people to have a one-stop place to access all the help they need to build amazing marriages, yes. Wow, okay, this was already a lot. Let's kind of like uh, cut it into pieces and map okay. it on the product field. So it's like a, a one-stop, oh, sorry. You're still like with me on the screen. So it's a one-stop solution. So, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it um, connects okay. different different services and offerings in one in one place right yes please but let's start on the outside so who are the users okay so the users are uh, married couples between one year and 10 years of marriage Yeah, then also you, we have talking, those, who about, oh. those who are about to get wedded as well. Oh, People sorry. Who are Let's be precise. Sorry, I lost the post-it. So it's like young, young, oh, yeah, yeah. what's going on today here? Okay. Sorry for the hiccup. It's okay. So not sure why I'm not able to write a post-it right now. Let's do it once again. Okay, back yeah, in the yeah. game. Young married couples. Yes, please. One, two, ten years. Yes, please. Then uh, the second set of users are those who are about to get married. Those were counting down to marriage, you know. Okay, I fixed my connection issues. Hopefully. Okay. Sound is still okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Okay, once again, so, wow, this is broken today. Let's, let's try a different approach. I'm, I mean, I'm, we are building the software. Why, <laughs> why should we use uh, Miro? So we I just like create a, a project here and we try this one. Okay. So this, I'm sorry, I, I thought it's more visual in Miro, but we can do the same here. 
So, um, so young couples, I put it, um, put it again here and you couples about to be married, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So two user groups, what are their motivations? What are their needs? Okay. So, um, a lot of people go into marriage because they want to experience joy and bliss, right? So, uh, but, okay, experience joy and bliss and peace, okay. Then, I'm not, okay, bliss, right? You know. No, bliss. What's this? I don't know it. <laughs> okay, we could just type peace, yeah, peace works. Perfect. Okay. Then ah. another thing, another thing they want is this. They want to understand, they want to understand their spouses. Good. Then another one is they don't want to repeat the cycle. They don't, they don't, they don't want to repeat negative cycles. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay, maybe one more. So they need answers. They need answers, but they don't know where to go without being stigmatized. Mm. Okay, so that's actually jumping into the problem sections. They do not know where to get answers without being stigmatized without being stigmatized right exactly yeah okay what what else um what else are the the problems okay yeah so um well uh, the cultural uh cultural gap generational gap between uh, the young couples and the old ones there's a cultural uh, generational gap, yes. Yeah. Okay. Then also, a fast changing, a fast changing world where lies our blood. Yes. Okay, shall I still go ahead? I think that's uh, good for the problem. So we look into your solution. We repeated what we um, have uh, have discussed in the Miro board. So it's a one-stop solution. Yes, please. Is it a platform, a website, or what is it? It's a mobile app. Okay. Yeah. Um, then it's a digital safe space. It's a safe space anyway, you know. And I, we can put like digital here. Yes, please. So what kind of like components does this mobile app or service has? Are there like different offerings? Yes, please. So um, you can get access to counseling on the app. Yes. Okay. Um, you can get uh, reminders and nudges on what to what you plan to do with your spouse. What to do as a couple or with your spouse? Yeah. Yes. Yes, as a couple or you know. Okay. Then you have access to uh, podcasts and books and articles. Anything else? Yes, uh, you also have access to a community, you know, through the forum. So you get to, you know, there, there's a community sourced kind of, you know, a forum where you have answers to challenges, yeah. Cool, so what does your solution, uh, what is the uniqueness of this trifold app or solution? So 
it's a digital safe space. This makes it unique, right? Because yes, there's no other safe space in and uh, what else? It's it's like the one-stop solution. You were talking yes, about so. like alternatives that there are, that uh, there are alternatives, but the alternatives are very fragmented, right? Yes, they're fragmented. Yes. So maybe let's start with the alternatives. Uh, couples or young couples with these motivations. Are there any alternatives without trifold? So what are the alternatives? Okay, so the alternatives are, uh, you know. Counselors, private counselors who offer services. Then you have uh, you have uh, influencers on social media who put out posts on mm. uh, yeah, who put out posts on marriage and all that. Okay. Then obviously you have uh, okay, so we have some mobile apps, but they focus, they are focused on the American market. Mm. I think this leads to a specific uniqueness. So the uniqueness also is uh, in the market you're addressing. Exactly. So, so what, what's your focus? The, the African market. And, um, Yeah, the African market. Okay, so alternatives are also all these fragmented sources like books, podcasts, exactly. but they are yes. like, um, yeah, hard to find, I guess. Or what's the problem with the books and the podcasts as an existing um, solution? Yeah, so uh, the kind of fragmented for you to get a curated list of mm. the right kind of books is difficult. So we'll be curating, you know, the kind of books, you know, on our so, so curating different sources is kind of the uniqueness that you offer, yes. right? Or the product uh, Trifold offers. Exactly. So what's happening here is this ping pong between like uniqueness and alternatives. So That's if true. you have like a good and well-balanced product, um, you really have to, to find all the alternatives and then think, am I offering a true alternative to these alternatives by having like a uniqueness in my product? And what is the uniqueness? And we found like three different uniquenesses right away. It's like, it's a one-stop solution. It bundles like different offerings. It yes, offers yes. curation and it has focus um, on the African market. Exactly. And then we can get, get into the detail. What differs like your app as an offering for the African market to, uh, in comparison to apps for the American market? And then okay. we're getting like really close to the product because exactly. <laughs> there must yes. be something different and people want to experience this difference in the product. So maybe we just like break it down. So what, what, what is the difference um, when addressing the African market? Okay, uh, so, well, we have the cultural difference. So um, the way we approach things here yeah, is, kind, is kind of different from, it's quite different from that, uh, the approach uh, the Americans have towards these things. There is a greater level of, you know, uh, conservativeness around here, yeah, and all of that. So one has to put that in mind when creating a product, particularly on something as sensitive as marriage and all of that, yes. Okay, so I'm not, Uh, elaborating further but that's what you do when you start working with your team you kind of like see um, some sticky notes some post-its some insight that I share and then you kind of like get into this discussion and really um, kind of like shape already your product and the strategic yeah. decisions so I'm really curious about the, the point that you um, like offer access to podcasts and books and articles because this leads to the enablers right So yes, um, it's possible to create such a rich offering because there are like podcasts and uh, books that you can aggregate and curate, right? Yes. So this is talking about like uh, partners or other resources here on the enabler level. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other strong enablers that make this app possible? Okay, so uh, because we already spoken with some people, 
who are known, who are kind of popular within Nigeria, particularly in relation to uh, marriage and all of that. So they are going to be ambassadors and also uh, they're going to be, you know, uh, creating content on the platform. Mm. So you have um, content creators from Nigeria. Yes, please. And here we see like a strong connection because product field is not about like putting things into boxes, but we have like this special uniqueness addressing the African market. Yeah. One way of being specific about the African market is uh, having content creators from Nigeria and not content only from America. So we, we see the connection between this uniqueness, your relationship to the enablers, the content creators and the product like creating the things. And um, what I really want to put emphasis on, like working with the product field here, it's not about like putting post-its into boxes. That's what you can do with other canvases or in the white box. It's really about like moving the things and bring them in form. So giving them the right space on these axes of uh, realization and introduction. And by doing so, um, you gain insights things come closer together, they kind of like connect just by the position on the field. And then you start to develop like new ideas or new concepts or start to kind of like describe these insights. And this is the, the process of collaborative sense making, making, mm -hmm. making ideas explicit, <laughs> and then like moving them around so that different perspectives are connected. It's not about putting things in boxes. It's really about these connections and things get excited if you, you kind of find like, um, wow, they are close here in this area or, or here. And these are always like special moments finding content for different products in, uh, in, in prominent areas. <laughs> Let's say it like this um, okay. of the field. Okay, but having the concept of ambassadors already is, is an aspect of distribution, right? So yeah. it's like um, people who are famous in your market are contributing to this product, which is a exactly. strong argument uh, for distributing uh, this thing and reaching a specific market. Um, so true. I'm jumping a bit because I'm following the discussion. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. ambassadors oh, is uh, also important for, for um, distribution. This makes me curious, who is like paying for this product? Am I paying on the App Store or is it like a subscription model? Are you giving it away for free? Do you have a sponsor? What is the, what is the, the, the business model here? Okay, so the business model is that uh, you, you get the app for free, but then, yeah. and then when you come on the app, you're able to access, you know, quite a number of things. But for you to um, activate the reminder and nudges feature, you need to subscribe. Mm. And then if you need uh, a counseling session, you have to pay for it. So basically. So this is subscription model. Yes, please. Um, and so users and customers are in this case the same, right? Yes, they are. Um, is it a platform model that counselors have to pay to Trifold? Or are couples only paying for the counselors? Are they paying directly to the counselors or are, are they paying to trifold and trifold is like paying the counselors? That, okay, so that, the, the pay to us and then we pay to the counselors. Oh, okay. So uh, what we see then is like that the counseling sessions um, are a very important um, part of the, of the business model, right? Because there's yeah, the price tech on the on, on the counseling session, and what you can do here, I do do kind of like a, a power move here. You could create a new field for counseling sessions. Oh wow! And um, elaborate further. What does it mean to run a good counseling session? I just do it because it's possible right now. Um, I, I create a new field for counseling sessions. And what we then see, if we go to the to the counseling sessions, how are counseling sessions distributed? Oh wow, it's beautiful. Um, they are distributed right to the trifold app. Yeah, just to give you like this single move, and this is how things are not like tree structures. 
nowadays <laughs> or simpler linear pathways this is like really the the complexity and the maybe the beauty <laughs> of digital product design or product design and innovation nowadays but um centering counseling sessions it's the same users yes uh, but it's a, it's a different value proposition it's a business mm -hmm. model pay per session or pay per, per uh, 10 sessions maybe and exactly. um, but we see the the dis they are distributed to this trifold app and so we are linking up and see a connection here and we might have one team that's responsible for the trifold app but we might have one team that's um, uh, responsible for the quality of counseling sessions counseling as session. well and these are different people but they need to understand um, how their work is connected and um, how they support each other in, in, uh, in doing the work. So because Trifold gets better with good counseling session and the other way around. That's true. Um, interesting. So uh, we are like meandering back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have talked about some enablers. I mean, it's just like a first demo session and it's really evolving into an interesting discussion because <laughs> I'm so curious about products. I love to talk about products and Amazing. we see great innovation here, um, but it's just to demo um, um, the product field. Um, so it's, it's quite some time left. We can tackle some other areas or like- Yes, please, we can. Turn to, okay, cool. So um, who's- we've talked about like enablers more in the sense of like partners but i'm now like really curious about uh, your team or the product team who's building the app okay because these are enablers as well right sure. so um maybe you can talk about like different different roles or people uh, who are involved in creating trifold okay uh, so uh we have uh, we have the designers the uh user interface and user experience designers. We have um, the mobile developer. We have the uh, uh, backend developer. Is there anyone? Then we have, yeah, then, then we have the, 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 the Product manager, uh, so that was more like the driver. Okay. So, and product manager is closer to the product for sure than the ambassadors. They are like yeah. very close to the to the technical part of the solution, and yeah. So we could kind of like look here it's a mobile app and moves this thing very close to the developers for the mobile app wow. and uh, the designers um yeah i think designers especially important to kind of like connect all the different parts so focus on the design might be to really like give this broad offering the one-stop solution the feeling of like these things are connected and belong together Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So there are relations as well. But I'm curious, uh, you were talking about like curation and also about like content. So is there a content yes, role? Is there an editorial team or? Yes, there is an editorial team, uh, about um, six, to, six to seven people. And then things get exciting when we talk about the production. So I'm just doing guesswork. You have to write software. <laughs> and it's yes, always yes. good to, to, to add some verbs like here, but you have to kind of like curate content. And um, yeah, and do research designing the app. Um, these are pretty obvious. What you want to do now is kind of like dig deeper what it means for this specific content. Is there anything um, specific about this kind about editing? So maybe you're not only talking about developers here, but also about the framework and technology they are using. Because yeah. now JD and I am talking, but once we invite the developers, <laughs> they would tell us like different things about the solution. That's all about the perspective. Okay. And they say, I do use React or Angular or whatever. I do use native script and uh, view. So they are talking about technical frameworks while the 
uh, editors might talk about the voice and tone and uh, the way they write the content and what's important for them, maybe to do it like very, yeah, uh, search engine optimized or not, <laughs> but they, they have kind of like guidelines as well. And um, uh, so they would uh, kind of like make the whole discussion more specific, but we can exactly. stay at the surface for now. It's designing yeah. software, but how you write the software, this is important. And that's something that you can discuss here, how you connect design and development for this specific thing. That's something you can discuss here. Is it important for editorials to work with designers to kind of have like rich styled uh, graphics and content? So, and that's something you discuss here. And also there are activities that are ongoing and other yep. activities that are, um, yeah, maybe writing the, the content management system is more work at the beginning, less during the process or during the, yeah. the, the uh, running the, the project. Okay. So I'm curious about, is there anything, um, yeah, what's the goal? Let's, let's, let's jump to the top of the field. So why, okay. why is someone, why is like, who is investing? Who's driving this thing? Was it the idea of the product manager? Who had the idea? Who's behind that whole thing? Okay. So uh, Dario Salako uh, is uh, driving the, the project and um, I'm supporting her in driving it as well. So basically two of us are driving it. Cool. Uh, so, so you are driving it? Is it your name? Yeah. No, that Dio is uh, is the major driver. Oh, okay. So, so, so what's uh, can you spell it or post it in the chat? So, uh, sorry, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, D a y o, D a y o. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. And what's his goal? Or what's the goal, the goal of the project? Why he's okay. invested in this thing? Why is he working so hard? It's uh, it's a she. Oh, right, so. she. Why is she yeah, working yeah. so hard? <laughs> good, good. So, um, Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> all right. So um, the, there are a lot of people going through a lot of pain in their marriage, but uh, these things get explosive because they've kept, you know, they've kept it within themselves. They've tried to manage it by themselves and then things just go downhill from there. So that pain, the, the, the children that get, you know, uh, torn apart from their parents, the pain of divorce and all of that is one of the goals. We want to ensure that, you know, uh, uh, people don't have to separate because they didn't understand how to communicate with each other and all of that, right? So taking away the pain of divorce. Also, uh, uh, you know. So I heard like, do not leave uh, couples alone with their problems. Exactly. Um, providing support, also, yeah. For also, uh, uh, you know, preserving the future of the children in marriages. Yep. And you know, uh, beautiful marriages uh, lead to greater productivity. So mm. yeah, so there's an economic counterpart to that as well. You know. Okay, I need to okay. drag that. Down. Yeah. So okay. there's the impact for the economy. So are there any business goals? Is there the need of making money? Is it like, uh, this would be interesting as well. You don't have to share it right now, but here's the high level society impact of the project, yes. the passion of the founders, the passion of the driver. Yes. And that's good to know it, especially when you work as a startup. Yeah, This needs to connect. You can't like drive this thing if you don't share the goals. <laughs> you can, uh, but but it's a product with us passion. It's a product with us love. So um, it's very good to have these goals as well. And these are shared goals with the users. So having this term like beautiful marriages, um, seems to me like something that's really in between goals and motivations. That's true. Um, because you have like drivers or the whole team says, hey, we're we want to see more beautiful marriages. And yeah. the people 
who are going to use the product. Hey, I'm a young couple and I want to walk in a beautiful marriage. So exactly. this is really a shared thing between like goal and motivation. And if you are able to express these shared idea between like inside and outside um that's always that's always good to know here's the purpose maybe of the product yeah it's up here the purpose is between inside and outside on the very abstract level of the product down here is more like the implementation details what's important for implementation but here's here's where you talk about the purpose and sometimes you don't know it up front now it's a pretty well-defined project <laughs> but take a mess of a product that's not successful anymore that has a certain history or uh, uh, think of a project that's not um, that far as your project and um, people sometimes don't know the purpose of the thing so um, look for this spot and try to kind of like collect enough ideas to to find the material in the world to 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 find a purpose for the product okay, okay. Um, maybe one aspect um, about distribution. We, we've been talking and then we stop like doing this because we can continue for the next two hours. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, we have that. not talked about like weaknesses and strengths and weaknesses. So okay. um, what, let's, let's talk a bit about distribution and then focus on strengths and weaknesses. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, how, how are you going to distribute this thing? Is it on the App Store or is it like um, is it Google Play yeah, Store? So, uh, where, what's, where, where, how do you distribute? Yeah. Okay, so we're distributing both on the App Store and the Play Store. Yeah. So how do people find the thing? Okay, yeah, so... Uh, People get to find, first of all, we'll have, uh, you know, uh, events, virtual events, where some of these ambassadors who are influencers will talk about, you know, the product, and then people get to sign up. Um, also, uh, you know, just the way you can visit a website and then you, you're told to share, you know, share the link of maybe mm -hmm. an article you read. So you can actually get to share you know, something you found on the app with your friends. Mm. So then you're able to, you know, download and all of that. Yeah, so um, also, um, also would obviously uh, do some paid ad advertising, you know, uh, on Facebook and Instagram, we get to do some paid advertising uh, to get people, uh, to get people, you know, signing up. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, down here, it's really, you get into discussions about the growth model. What should happen? So this, this is an easy one, but uh, you already tackled it. It needs a sharing functionality um, in the app. You have to build it. The content needs to be fined. <laughs> uh, people are let into the app. So this is kind of like growth hacking and connecting yeah, exactly. really like the distribution to, to, to uh, product. And then you start to talk about, okay, so then we need new content because <laughs> people who are already in the app want to share again and they need new stuff to share. Exactly. And um, so then, then it's really about like implementing or yeah, what, what are you bringing out? So what are you introducing? Not one time because <laughs> uh, it continued. Exactly. Okay. Um, about let's let's discuss some weaknesses because we're like really positive here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. good. Because I, 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 uh, you have a clear strategy. I hope you had like um, no alignment problems. <laughs> you tackled the complexity already. Um, mm -hmm. So what makes it hard to actually realize and introduce this product? Okay, uh, so uh, I would say one of the things we want to try to do is to is to make the counseling sessions happen in app, but at the moment we have to use a third party, you know, uh, uh, what's it called third party um, platforms, and that could be difficult in terms of you know privacy and all of that. So we have to watch out for privacy issues. So. And this could be, there could be like pri privacy concerns. Exactly. 
And now this is interesting, not regarding the app maybe, but regarding the counseling session. Exactly. Yes. So, and because the business model is connected to the counseling sessions, we would yeah. then jump into this field yeah, and say, okay, a hinderer of the distribution of counseling sessions, they're very present in the app. People say, oh, that's interesting. Could be um, privacy um, mm. issues. Okay. But I put it here for now. Okay. So this is kind of like, if you evaluate it, it's, it's, it's negative. So I do okay. a, a negative score here. Okay. And um, so was it hard? Is there anything technically that's kind of like hard? Is there, are there any integrations, payment providers that are not easy to integrate? Um, what about the production speed? Okay, so I would say we've been bootstrapping this. So bootstrapping, you know, kind of, uh, you know, timelines sometimes are missed. So yeah, bootstrapping, you know, uh, make it a bit difficult. Okay, so um, so the, the production, um, so I, I, I overemphasize it, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> um, missing um, timelines um, leads to re-coordination with marketing maybe. Yeah. Um, okay, but I'm, I'm overemphasizing. Okay, but let's focus, uh, okay, I just give it a score to show you uh, the evaluation. Um, Okay, negative. Negative score with a product field. So what makes you very positive is that there are couples, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you did some research and um, you know that a couple say, I don't want to repeat negative cycles. So this is like yeah. really a plus here. Okay. And then we have Dayo is her name, right? Yeah, Dio. Yeah, and she's doing an amazing job, right? That's what exactly. I read in the. Uh, that's what I read in the Zoom chat here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what you do um, in the workshop or when working with Myro um, is you do a dot voting, yeah, or you say like, okay, we looked at this team, we collected different perspectives on our product, so let's get a shared understanding of what works well, what doesn't work well. And then you do a dot voting, like positive and negative things. And um, what we can do in the software, but already did with Beamers, you kind of get a visualization, like a weather map, uh, what makes this product successful or where are the main hinderers. And wow. what we see here, this is really a sketch. Don't take it too serious right now. But what we see here is, wow, we've researched this great value. And we really, we maybe did a prototype or paper prototype. And people, a lot of people in the market do have this need. This is, makes us confident that it's successful. We, we have kind of like a driver and she's like really passionate about the goals. So, and um, I think they're like developers and we can give them green light as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're doing an amazing team, but we have some hinderers cause of um, bootstrapping the whole thing. We are not as fast as we want to do with the production. And this kind of like this introduces some back forces for the distribution and um, connecting it to the, to, the, to the business model. If you don't distribute it now, uh, the later we will sell counseling sessions, the later we will get money back, which makes it harder to be productive as we are bootstrapping this thing. So exactly. we need to kind of like close this business model loop as well um, to kind of like, yeah, pay um, the team. So what else is, is possible is kind of like give you a um, character indication of your innovation because there are different types of innovation. I, I do it like real quick. Uh, we assume this is like a value pull innovation. People love that product that much that will, they will share the content with their friends. This leads to growth. Amazing. Sometimes you have like resource push innovations. We have it a lot in Germany. Um, uh, think of like compact disc alt CD <laughs> or think about like mm -hmm. publishing houses who were making printed magazines and have a lot of like people writing for printed magazines, but now try to push their content into digital channels because distribution mm -hmm. has changed. This is a resource push innovation. Yeah, we already have okay. the music. We are distributing them once again, not on vinyl uh, or LP, but mm -hmm. on CD. 
we are distributing it mm. again uh, via um, MP3 on iTunes. We are distributing it again on Spotify. This is like really selling old stuff into new channels. It's like um, resource push. But also AWS, like the software uh, offerings from Amazon, they are like resources push innovation. Amazon had set up this whole infrastructure and then they were thinking, oh, we can rent it out. We can like share our server resources. And this was the beginning of AWS, so um, resource push innovation. And sometimes you have uh, market pull innovations because you know there is an existing business model, but not in our market. Exactly. Uh, and in Germany and Europe, we had like a company builders in e-commerce who were like yeah, a validated business model. And they just to spread it out as uh, in, in other countries like Eastern countries, and the same validated business model. This is like, cause they know the market <laughs> is going to yeah, pull it out of their hands. It's a validated model in a certain market and you put it in another market and then you have kind of like a market pull innovation. And then there are idea push innovations, thinking of something like the um, Apple iPod and Steve Jobs. Idea push innovations really need like strong drivers and uh, endless control about like resources. <laughs> so endless resources, because you try and iterate a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot before you go to the market. But if you hit the market, it's really like this boom effect of like introducing um, an iPod. So this is about like um, idea push. Okay, um, stopping here for a second. Uh, what our software does is giving you like an automated presentation, but this is, I don't want to share it. It's focused on the product field. I would love to do uh, it in Miro because Miro is like really easy to start with uh, different people. Happy to <laughs> solve Miro's technical problems on my computer uh, with this software. I hope you could like follow um, what we've done here even like content wise, not, not just like us using the, the software. So should we yeah, jump into a Q and A sessions because someone was writing in the chat, I have a question at Innovate. So I'm happy to um, first do a question and answers to be like more interactive now, open it up for, for the people who are here on Miro. And maybe afterwards I can um, uh, think further, right? What do you think JD? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, so we can open up for questions. Because this so if you have a question, you could just. Okay, somebody said he has a question. Please, could you go ahead and just, you know, share your question? Just drop it here. I'm going to read, I'm going to read it out. Do I ask this person to unmute? Okay, do you want to speak? Okay, let me try to unmute you so that you can speak. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, send you an unmute. Uh, okay. So I've asked you to unmute, so you could just unmute and, okay. Uh, okay, good evening. Thank you, um, thank you, Michael. I really love the the presentation. Thank you, Innovate Lab. Uh, I have a list of questions, and I'll be, I mean, I'll be very fast with it so that I won't take our time. So, um, I wanted to talk about. I was speaking from the presentation from the live demo. I was speaking some, I mean, some things about the visual. So, in the presentation when you started showing us um, the, the visual on trifold, um, showing the weaknesses and the, I'm what do you call it, and the strengths, I noticed that, I mean, does those angles, this polygon that was drawn here, does, does that make me, um, you know, I mean, does that make me determine some insight about my product? Because I see that the, the, the polygon, the angles for the negative values was actually right into the field. And the, the, the positive value, the highest positive value was going outside almost 
towards outside the field? Does it does that mean anything? Does it mean that okay? I mean, you know, does it draw any insight for me? That's yes. my first question. Okay, I like to know that. Okay, so this is indicating in our example and in our fictive fictive evaluation, and that this is a value pull innovation. Oh. That this product is on this axis. It's the axis of introduction. Is kind of like pulled out um, into the market, right? Okay. okay. So it's like really pulled out because users see the value. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, and so, so maybe it just we have this reference guide. It's online for free. If you go to this chapter of like evaluation. We have okay. come up with a very short description of different character types. And mm -hmm. uh, you can read more um, resource push innovations, strong enablers, empower idea generation and implementation on the market. This was the AWS example. And what we have here is like value pull, okay. turning satisfied users into paying customers. Oh, okay. it's good that I reread the book again because <laughs> it's, it's actually the case. You have satisfied users for trifold okay. and you turn them into paying customers either for the notification feature or turn them into paying customers for counseling sessions, right? Oh. Okay. okay. So this fits the example quite well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So another thing I want to ask, I'll just like merge two questions together. So, um, so after going through the product field to, you know, kind of map out what my product will look like and get insights to know what to do. So what's the next line of action? Do I just gather my team and say, okay, guys, now let's start building since we already know or want to build or what do we, what do we really get to do next after all this? after collecting all this information and insight and all of that. So what do we do next? Yeah, good question. Sometimes uh, when trying to answer and discuss all aspects, you realize that you don't have all the information yet. So um, when I come to organizations and do a product feed for real world use cases, sometimes fields stay empty or oh. Um, the insights are very weak. Yeah, they, they write uniqueness inspiration. We are like very inspirational or our uniqueness is the user experience. That is too vague. <laughs> that are not strong points. So um, this is what I mean, you spot the gaps. And uh, next yeah. thing, if you spot gaps, you need to fill the gaps. And this really depends on the organization, but some organizations don't care about user research. And so they don't have like really valid or dense information about users, motivations, and their problems. So the next step would be, uh, if you realize it, just here as a fictive example, hey, okay. we need to re-research uh, users. So, mm. and this is all going towards the consistency of the description. Okay. Um, and once you have the consistency of the description, so you have information in all fields, you check the coherency of the innovation. Does it make sense at all? And if okay. it makes sense, <laughs> uh, you okay. start building. But saying that you can do product field whenever your product or innovation idea, not just in the beginning, um, okay. struggles or when you see a conflict or uh, when there's misalignment in the team, when oh, you're not as okay. focused as you are, because okay. no product when I do product sessions, every product is in a crisis in a way. <laughs> it's not that it's set into the world because the context yeah. is changing. Things on the outside are changing. Things on the inside are changing. <laughs> and mm. uh, the product itself needs to renew itself. It's not an everlasting thing that you put into the world. So re-evaluating before any major investment decision or oh, okay. when onboarding new team members is very important and okay. key for this shared understanding, which leads to commitment and shared alignment. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I think I'll just drop other questions. So I won't 
keep others waiting. Thank you so much. Okay, amazing. Thank you, Emmanuel Oluwatobi. Uh, so uh, we have another question from Samson Oroko. Is there a feature like an AI that will kind of overlay your product with other existing ones to kind of validate or give a percentage of how viable the product will be? Yeah, that's an amazing idea. If you want to work on this, welcome to our team. No, um, we're actually looking <laughs> into um, how to, yeah, actually support like human intellect through tools and through machine learning. What we uh, do have right now is um, sessions where you have like different guiding questions. For example, this is an elevator pitch session and the elevator pitch is hidden in the product field. I, I won't answer the questions now, but for whom are you building the product? What is their needs? What are the problems? This is your solution. It is uh, in compared to alternatives unique. This is something that you can say like in three minutes to describe your product. And, but going back to the sessions, you can um, also, yeah, import business model canvas questions. And I will go there like real quickly, just cook, look where the, the blue things appear and you can connect existing answers to questions coming from uh, different innovation methodologies. So no AI yet, it would be great if there will be AI one day. I'm looking forward to this moment where the computer really supports like human intellect. Because this is a, if you go back to Doug Engelbart and the pioneers of like computing, they thought like computers are machines to augment human intellect. And yeah, that, yeah, we are aiming at that direction. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, well, uh, I, I think uh, somebody commented as uh, Toby Mano said, I love the product field already, even without you. the AI, you know. <laughs> so that's amazing and then Thank a lot you. of people have been dropping um, amazing feedback about how amazing these resources wow wow so uh i, I think yeah there, there's still some things that michael wants to share so that you can see how the product field still kind of uh it's like an all-inclusive solution that also factors in many um innovation tools that we know about so you will just go ahead and try to share how these things are reflected in the product field. Yeah. Okay, so I continue with a few slides and also scribbling. Uh, thank you for your uh, kind and uh, motivating comments in the uh, chat window. I've, I've, I've seen it. That um, makes me happy. Um, so there's a lot of like uh, methodologies, mantras, sayings when you um, dig into innovation literature, when you read some blogs and stuff like that. And problem solution fit is nothing by Ash Majura, but he makes it like very prominent. Ash Majura is the inventor of the lean canvas, which is like an exciting evolution of the business model canvas. And he says like before investing months or years of effort towards building a product, the first step is determining if this product is something worth doing. And I just switch yeah, to, to my camera here. And I mean, We've discussed it, but it's in the field. So problem solution fit is really on this di uh, di diagonal axis of the product field. Are you having as a, as a company, as a team, the resources to build a solution that solves a problem for the people with certain motivations, then you create value for these people. So this is the axis of problem solution fit in the product field. If you struggle with product solution fit or want to start a new product, you should be pretty sure to validate your assumptions, your uh, um, your ideas to, to, to have a problem solution fit. Okay. And now I'm bringing a few more ideas, methodologies together. Then there's a product market fit. So the only thing that matters is product Market fit, says uh, Mark Andresen of Y Combinator, I guess. Um, so let's look where product market fit is. You have the product here 
and you have the market down here. So on this axis, we're talking about the product market fit. Are you, are, does your product incorporates an idea, a business model viability that fits into the market? So, and these are like two different things. Sorry, I don't want to like um, oversimplify the things, but it sometimes appears to me that American companies and startups um, have kind of like not a balance between problem solution fit and product market fit, but they first have problem solution fit and afterwards they're only optimizing for product market fit and the revenue model and stuff like that. This is like um, how kind of like initially great products get deformed. And I've talked to designers who are, and designers are caretakers of problem solution fit, the product logic, right? They talk to the users. And um, designers who are only driven by business KPIs um, have to remove features from the product that are of value, they can measure it by research, but they have to remove these features because they don't contribute um, to the business model. And uh, I dream of a world where like product market fit and problem solution fit are well balanced and uh, not the, the business model is superior to the problem solution fit. Okay, I do it really quick now. Um, next thing here is The Lean Cycle by Eric Ries. It's a very popular book, I guess 10, well, maybe even older years old. Um, but look at this. With, oh, I have a laser pointer, great. So we have learn, measure, and build. And in between is we build with code, we measure, which gives us data, and we learn, which gives us idea. Um, so the same as design thinking, it's pretty easy to visualize this build, measure, learn loop on the product field. Because where's building happening? Build is down here. Measuring happens on the market. Because in comparison to design thinking, this is not testing a prototype. This is like customer development, measuring with real customers. Are they willing to pay for that thing I've built on? I'm, I do it like very lean. And then you have to learn here. And learn kind of like match the same spot uh, of as de define the design thinking process. And this is how, yeah, these uh, things connect. And if you want to introduce here, it's about the idea, the uniqueness regarding what you've learned. Okay, you bring the data to learn data-driven design. And what you see down here is um, uh, you implement through code. So this is why Lean Startup is a, book of the digital age and not of physical products for sure because <laughs> uh, speeding up the whole lean cycle is because you are able to code you can ship it right now you can deploy it release early release often you can measure and uh, take this into account to 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 learn um so yeah I'm not sure if you have run a, a design sprint. Um, this is a, a pretty famous um, format introduced a few years by Google Ventures, I guess. Uh, the name is Jake Knapp. Um, it's a five day process. On Monday, you meet, you kind of like unpack. Tuesday, you sketch solutions. Wednesday, you decide on what it's best. Then you build a realistic prototype and you test it. Um, and yeah. What's funny here, it's not as easy to draw as the other examples, but actually what happens if you've experienced a design sprint is um, the unpack is context clarification. In the unpack, everyone who is like contributing to this design sprint gives his or her perspective on the product. And uh, as we've seen, like you have different perspectives on the product, so unpacked is actually uh, like content context clarification what happens then is you sketch competing solutions so this is tuesday here's like monday all around here this is monday 
then you take the decision on Wednesday. On Thursday, you're going to prototype that thing. And on Friday, you're going to test it. So you have like these five distinct days here, the Mondays to unpack context clarification, sketching competing solutions, deciding on one, what fits the purpose best, uh, prototyping this thing, and then um, testing it. OK. Huh. I love this one, but I can't draw. <laughs> It's scratching your own itch. Um, <laughs> maybe you've heard about it. Um, it's, it's a saying like young startups, long, young entrepreneurs should like scratch their own itch. What does it mean? Um, and I think like Dropbox is like the founding story of Dropbox is like very one famous example. That means the person on the inside is actually the person on the outside. Because mm. I am the driver and I'm going to build this product to here's my itch to scratch my own itch. So, and then I come up with a solution and um, this simplifies things. You don't have to do user research because you are the user. You have the perspective of someone who has the need and the problem and wants to build a solution to scratch it. And by doing so, idea is very very close to value so basically you're having like a triangle shape here for scratching your own itch and remove a lot of like um conflicts and tensions between motivations and goals because like making a successful business has to do something with money with goals <laughs> yeah and uh, this could be like in conflict with the motivations um, but the moment you are like the same person user and driver and you're creating it for yourself and then you understand well there's a market um, it's it's it simplifies the initial phase of like building um products and uh yeah a warning maybe if you scratch your own itch sometimes you don't care enough about the alternatives there might be someone out there who already scratched this itch but you are so passionate about like building your own scratching machine, yeah? your own solution that you kind of not see um, that there's an existing solution in the market. I have to speed up a bit, I guess. So um, there's another mantra, it's called like eat your own dog food. It's a Microsoft saying. So Microsoft people were forced to use Microsoft tools. Um, and then Tony Scott like rephrased eat your own dog food into eat your own ice creaming. Um, what does it mean in the visual form of the product field? The people who are building this thing here, the team, needs to get into the position of the customer and the user. This is like validating, <laughs> testing, um, creating empathy for the people uh, that need to use Excel, PowerPoint, whatever. So um, everyone who contributes to the work, the product in the center, should also eat it, consume it. And it shouldn't take like dog food, but it should take um, like ice cream. It's changing or shifting perspectives. And then there's um, Conway's Law, a software engineer who said, any organization that designs a system will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. We, see this pattern again when, when we talk about like microservices and microservice architecture. Um, but what it means, all misbehavior, they're putting it negative now, but all the good things. So all the love, let's put it like reframe it as positive. All the love is happening here in the team. Um, all the harmony between engineers and designers all the clarity that you create for your team when using tools like the product field is reflected through the product, through people who will use the product. If you are not able to communicate well in your team, uh, people will experience the glitches. They will kind of like feel the fights. They will be like, yeah, hinder us in using the products, um, the, 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 the 
the market is you can't reach the market size because of conflicts between like the discussions about like what quantity you want to build and how big the product is or what you address and you can't reach the quality um, because of um, yeah communication structures that are broken inside so um, really so let's phrase it positive if you have love in your team because you have like clarity shared understanding shared alignment commitment uh, people will more likely love your product because as Conway said it is mirrored through the product through the outside this is the axis of introduction that said I hope product fields help you to <laughs> gain clarity and even it, it was a lot today I mean um, I hope it helps you to uh, come into this clarity and communication structure of love and help you build like amazing products that people will love your users will love your customers will love okay i'm stopping here because it's all right all right amazing amazing wow this is amazing really really so and uh, it's a uh, it's a um, yeah this is amazing really so I, I believe you've been you've been helped by this, you know, amazing uh, presentation. Okay, uh, I'm trying to get people to to you know be part of the conversation. So if you could, you know, uh, yeah, I'm unmuting people. So just give feedback. Have you been helped? Did you enjoy yes. this? Yes, I did. Yeah. I yes. Did. Very well. Well. Yes, I did. That was lovely. Yes, yes, yes. I'm amazing. looking forward to trying this in a bit. This session was great. Yes, I did very Okay, 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 great. Great. So, um, amazing. All right, so, yeah. Uh, we're, just going to, we're just going to announce something that Michael has so graciously, you know, uh, you know, uh, told me to to announce to all of us and we at Innovate Lab are also glad that we're going to make this happen uh, together with Michael and Field. So for those of you who are patient to the end of this, so we'll be uh, offering six teams if you're representing a team, if you're uh, about to build a product or something, or if you're already building a product, or if you want to, you know, uh, bring in um, product field into what you've done already. If you want to, you know, recreate what you've done already using product field, then we'll be giving uh, six lucky teams an opportunity to have a deep dive with Michael for four hours. Uh, you know, it would be a walk through your product uh, using all the different, uh, 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 you know, fields in the framework as it were. So I, I would be, uh, I would ask you to send a mail to hello at innovatelab.com, hello at innovatelab.com. So when you send the mail, it shows us that you were part of this uh, event till the end of it. So you send a mail to hello at innovatelab.com and then we're going to send you an application link. Uh, obviously, we know that more than six teams are represented here, so but we want to just give the allowance for six teams as it were. So send an email to hello at innovatelab.com. I'll type that. I'll type that right now so you could get a C. Hello at innovatelab.com. Okay, great. So I've typed that. So six teams will be selected after the application process to experience a deep dive for about four hours with Michael. And that will be coming up in March, either mid-March or the last week of March. So thank you everybody for joining us. It's been an amazing time. We're going to be putting this, uh, the video, we're going to be putting it up on YouTube so you could go catch it, you know, and then ex explore it deeper. And as Michael also said, you can read the, uh, what's it called, the, the framework, you can read about it in the guide. And that's on read.productfield.com, okay? So read. I'll type that also here so that you could, uh, you know, get the resource as fast as possible. Read.productfield.com is where you can actually get to read the entire guide. Thank you so much, Michael. And thank you to the field team. Thank you to KP and uh, Wolfgang, even though they are not here. 
thank you so much for this amazing resource you blessed the world with. We can't wait to see you know massive numbers of people adopting this because it really is holistic. We can also you know from Conway's from Conway's uh, theory, it's obvious that you guys you know you build this product with love because. We all loved it, so it's obvious that you know it came from a place of love. So <laughs> thank you so so much. Thank you so so much. Uh, so we'll be rounding up right now. Thank you, everybody. We we'll look forward to having more amazing events uh, to resource you uh, all, so that Africa and the world can be blessed with better products in the in the coming years. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.